Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. Have you ever wondered if you can print TPU or flexible filaments on a Voron 0.1 like I have here? Well, if you did, you're in the right place. And uh, I just want to talk about the process that I used to go through and test and get these working. Uh, these are one of my favorite kinds of filaments to print. And as you can see here, um, I've got some NinjaFlex, some TPE, and some SaintSmart uh, TPU that all, that all printed very well. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching. The filaments that I'm going to be testing are Ninja Flex, which is pretty popular. It's also one of the softer filaments. I've also got some an old roll of Saint Smart. They don't even make the rolls like this anymore, but this is some uh, you know some TPU that I, I really like. And I also have some TPE, which is a little bit different than TPU. You might be wondering um, why I even print TPU. And for for my scenario, actually one of the reasons I got into 3D printing is because of uh, this little guy here, which is a custom FPV quadcopter. And you can see here I've designed this uh, camera mount. So that helps mount the camera to the drone. And what it does is um, it, it helps remove the jello that you would get while you're flying uh, your drone and trying to kind of use the goggles to fly. Of course, I've made a lot of other designs as well, like this uh, flexible TPU coaster. And uh, I, I find that TPU makes a really, you know, it's not only is it flexible, but it's also resistant to uh, like chemicals and spills. So I've, I've found that it works pretty well as a coaster. And of course, another really common use of TPU are phone cases. Here's another one of my designs. And this is something that I actually sell on eBay. It's a, it's called a gimbal guard. And um, I've got a few of these designs, but it helps protect your radio sticks. I hope I give you some ideas on why you might want to print TPU. Obviously every use case is going to be different, but these are just a few examples of how I find those filaments being useful. Now one thing that TPU does not like is humidity. And this particular filament right here is probably three or four years old at this point. So um, not a problem because it does really well, even if, if it's older filament, but you do need to keep it dry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this in my uh, dehydrator here, which is a Cabela's 12 tray pro series. I found it does a really nice job and can dry things out very quickly. All right, now we're just going to wait a couple hours. And once that's completed, I'll be able to start printing with it. When you're drying your filament, um, one of the reasons you want to do it, uh, especially with TPU, is that if you don't, you tend to get, first of all, poor adhesion. You also get poor surface quality. Things just don't look very good. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of extra stringing as well. All right, everything has cooled down now, and we're ready to go. So my goal here is going to be to <clears throat> successfully print each one of these TPUs or TPEs. And I've kind of put these in the order of how much they stretch or, or how elastic they are. The Saint Smart... Um, this is almost like PLA, but it, of course it's still flexible, but it really does not have a very high shore hardness. It's uh, I believe it's 95A, whereas the Ninja Flex over here is going to be a lot lower. So this is an 85A shore hardness, and even though it's only a difference of 10, uh, it's significantly different as far as the as far as 3D printing is concerned, because this. One of the challenges with TPU and where, where people have a lot of problems really comes down to feeding, especially if you have a Bowden drive, um, and also retraction. So whenever the printer retracts, um, it reduces, you know, it, it kind of does this. It kind of kinks up, or it can, if the filament path is not tightly constrained. Something that you're going to want to do if you're printing on a smooth PEI sheet like this, you're going to want to put glue stick on it because otherwise... TPU will stick too strongly to PEI, and then you might rip your sheet. Another good option and with the sheet I have here, which I'll put a link to in the description, you can use this uh, textured PEI, and you're, you're really not going to have to do anything to that surface, and it should come right off. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the uh, Saint Smart Red TPU loaded, and I just went through and purged it, so I didn't really have to do anything different to get it loaded. I did not adjust even the tension on the knob, which I may have to do for some of these softer filaments. <clears throat> but everything uh, went in just fine. For my testing, I decided to use this low poly EV test print. I find that this is a good model to torture test TPU. The ears help allow for uh, testing of retraction settings and stringing. And I also thought it would be good to use the Voron test cube. And I ended up trying this out a couple times and even using some different sizes and scaling it. One thing that you typically do notice on just about every TPU 
is um, you're going to get a little bit of stringing. Uh, you can kind of see a tiny bit of it there. That can be tuned a little bit with retraction and with uh, temperature settings, but because of the way retraction is with TPU, you're going to have to be very careful on how much retraction you put in. So the best way to do it is to get the temperature right. Okay, so you can see the print completed, which is good, but there is a lot of stringing right here between the ears, which I thought might be the case. So the other feature I'm going to use is this cutting plane and free cut feature of Idea Maker, which since I'm only really having issues with the head, I'm going to go ahead and slice that and just focus on printing that to see if I can improve the uh, stringing. All right, and after the third or fourth test here um, of just the heads, as you can see, I'm kind of stacking them up here. I think I'm pretty happy with this. There's still a little bit of stringing in between here, um, but it's I think it's probably the right balance. I had um, actually reduced a bit more of the stringing, but then I started getting some deformation at the top of the ears. I think this is a, a pretty good balance and really about as much as I want to tune it right now. So it, luckily the stringing is super easy to remove. You can even just move it with your finger. And then um, if you want to clean up the edges, you can as well. Here you can see the remaining tests that I did. So test seven was where we ended up. And I think, um, you know, the tuning that I've done here is pretty good. I'm sure there's probably some other ideas. And if you happen to have any, feel free to leave them in the comments. All right, next up, you can see that I'm printing the TPE. And this is actually going really well. One of the things I did have to do was loosen the uh, tension knob on the filament. So um, about a turn and a half to be exact. I really like the quality of this TPE. This is um, about 87A shore hardness, so it's not much, it's really not much different than the Ninja Flex, but uh, it just seems like the settings that I have for it just seem to really work well. There's no layer separation at all on, on the entire print, and it's just um, overall just a really good quality print. The Saint Smart print turned out really well also. Um, of course, this one, you can, you can hardly tell that it's flexible just the design of this print. I mean, certainly there's a little bit of push and smush, but it's um, because it's that 95A hardness and because of the design of the cube, you just don't really um, tend to notice as much like you would on a softer print, like with the TPE or the Ninja Flex. As I got into testing Ninja Flex, you'll notice that I've jerry-rigged a cooling fan here. And one of the reasons for that is it just looks like it needs a little extra cooling, a little more than the the 0.1 mini afterburner can give it. Um, I started with the baseline profile that I use for the TPE, since they're very similar, and uh, basically just slowed it down a little bit, and the result's looking really good so far. Over the course of my testing, this often happened, what you see pictured here. Um, this is unfortunate, but this is basically what happens when your settings aren't quite right. You get what I call air printing, and it's uh, really due to the feed of the filament. And here's the last result where I, that I was happy with on the Ninja Flex Cube. And here's some of the other prints that I got that I felt good about. All right, in conclusion, I think the Voron 0.1 is definitely capable of printing flexible filaments like TPU, TPE, and even, even some of the softer filaments like Ninja Flex. I think the main use case for the V0.1 certainly is engineering grade materials printed with ABS, right? That's kind of what what it's designed for, especially with the enclosure. But if you do want to print flexible filaments, um, please check out my profiles, take a look at my settings, and I hope they can help you. If they can, uh, again, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. Feel free to uh, drop in any comments on your experience with flexible materials as well in the comments. Thank you.